Hey Nigel. So hey. I think we had a pretty successful sunrise there. We have... <laughs> it was pretty successful. Yes. <laughs> um, and I think we've obviously shot a couple of things a little bit differently. So just talk to me about how you shot sunrise and I'll go through how I shot sunrise. Yeah, yeah, cool. It was interesting because obviously I've got this new Z8 and only had it for a day. So <laughs> uh, that, that, that was just getting used to that, and especially when you're coming down to seascapes, it's, it's tricky to get used to a new camera, but it was fantastic. And um, the way I approach any subject that I shoot is I try and tell a story, evoke an emotion. They're, they're, those are the two sort of overriding things. And then there's four things that come under that. And I, I think that composition, subject, timing, and lighting are so yep. important. Yep. So we came down here at sunrise to get good lighting, hopefully, and we did. Yep. <laughs> and then it was a case of, you know, trying to find a subject. So that subject might be the clouds or, mm -hmm. you know, the, the background or the rocks. And then, you know, finding a composition to fit all those things together and then just timing it right, really. And, you know, that, that's just taken a lot of shots for me with the waves because I was shooting with a long lens and trying to get the rays coming over the village. Yeah, I mean, obviously you've got a slightly longer lens than me, so you've yeah. got a little bit closer. But... Yeah, so what were you shooting with? So but... I was 14, 24. 14, yeah. And you were 100 to 400? Yeah, 100 yeah. to 400. I think I was shooting one about 135, yeah. 140. I also had my 24 to 200 lens on as yeah. well, so switched between the two, really. So is there a particular shot that you're really happy with? Yeah, so, so this shot here, there's a village over there with a church on, the rays were coming in the back, and I was yeah. shooting wide, but I felt like the waves, if I got low, the waves in the foreground were just crashing up really nicely and just starting to catch, not, not direct light, but a little bit of the backlighting. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to shoot really fast shutter speed. Yeah. Um, so I upped my ISO to ISO 400, which is a, one of the native ISOs of this camera, which is important um, to get the best quality yeah. image. And then um, I was just um, shooting at around about probably an eight hundredth of a second, maybe when it got a bit brighter up to 1,500th of a second, yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah, and it was epic. But you just showed me your shot just before, and that was something a little <laughs> bit different. Well, yeah, I think, I think <laughs> the, the real great thing about landscape photography is we've got two landscape photographers in yeah. the same location, the same sunrise, yeah. and we just shot it completely differently, as know, you it's say. it's crazy. And um, it, it was kind of like what we've been talking about earlier, which is it's just about shooting what you really like yeah. and the way that you want to capture that yeah. landscape. So the shot that I've taken, as you say, completely different, uh, 14 millimeters, it's ultra wide, I'm nice and low, and I'm not too concerned about with the positioning of the waves and the yeah. timing like you were in your shot, um, because mine's a long exposure, yeah. so I don't really have that level of timing when it comes to just individual waves. Yeah. But the big thing for me was just looking out for clouds and yeah. the cloud movement. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's why that long exposure works really well for me, because yeah. I just capture that movement of cloud at the top of the frame. Yeah. When it comes to the foreground, the long exposure isn't really doing much because the waves are just going to be completely yeah. smooth. Yeah. Um, but I just really like the way that it kind of draws you into this image and gives you yeah. this really nice yeah. vertical sunrise shot. Yeah. And, and that shot is, is something that I wouldn't have done. It's really interesting. I mean, I obviously take a lot of seascape um, photos. Yeah. Um, I've just come back from a month in Harris just taking <laughs> seascapes. But I think that's a really good representation of why you can have your own style, take have your own interpretation of the yeah. of the landscape yeah. because you know I, I've got to admit I came here thinking long exposure here is that really going to work sure. and uh, you know I don't do it that much so when you were doing it I, 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 I if I'm honest I probably thought it wouldn't work that well sure. and then you showed me the photo and I was like wow <laughs> that's incredible yeah. that's so so good so now I want to go and do loads of long exposures <laughs> <laughs> well as I say it's just something that I shoot because I thoroughly enjoy it and mm. um, you know, there's, there are shots that I've missed because that over that long exposure period, I can't yeah. shoot anything else. Yeah, no. So I'm missing those other shots yeah. that are happening. And, and even though it's not necessarily as important for timing, there is a shot that I've took just before that that didn't quite work out as well with the yeah. position of the sun. Yeah. So I think that final shot that I got, yeah. there is still a little bit of timing involved in that, but I yeah. think it works quite nicely. Yeah, and so, there's, there's yeah. a more global timing of yes. we need to be at sunrise. 100%, 100%. But, but yeah, I think, I think that um, it, it was just, it was just so different. I, I think I'd find it hard though, because I, 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 I'm not a, that patient. So I, <laughs> sure. I, I'd be like seeing a wave crash and go, oh no, I didn't capture that because it'll just be all flat. But yes, but it's just different, isn't it? it I think, is, I think it's it, just what's know, good. I do, I do mind that, or do I do keep in mind that when I'm stood there and I'm waiting for the camera to finish the exposure, I'm, as I say, I'm just missing all those other shots. Yeah. But, you know, I think 
at the end of the day, maybe that final shot is worth it for, yeah. for the yeah. result that I want. So, yeah. yeah, well, thanks so much for talking me through that That's shot. Okay. And thanks so much for talking me about the same location, the same yeah. sunrise, but two completely different ways of shooting. Yeah, it was incredible. Cool. I'm excited to go to a couple of other locations. I know, and, yeah. Well, we've got woodland and mountains yeah. here, so yeah. Yeah, and I hopefully we'll get to another location where we shoot it again completely differently. Yeah, yeah, cool. cool. So Nigel, you brought me to this incredible forest and I know that woodland photography is a particular favorite of yours. Yeah. So just talk me through some of the things that you think about and some of the things you're looking for in a yep. situation like this. Yeah, well, it's interesting actually, because this is one of the best forests I've ever photographed, yeah. probably in the world. <laughs> so it's a pretty good one. We nearly didn't get into it. It was closed in places, but it's open here, which is fantastic. The, um, the thing is the sun was just out then, just when you started yeah. speaking, now it's gone in again. And that's one of the big things in woodland photography to see the light and how the light hits it. I think it's the biggest thing that everybody finds difficult in woodland photography because it's complex, isn't it? There's yeah. things everywhere and um, it's quite overwhelming. So, so the first thing I'd say is try and find something simple. So, yeah. you know, just looking for, you know, here there's a, there's a couple of trees over a river and then also thinking about the light, so if it's sunny like this, it's gonna be really difficult. If you do wanna shoot in the sun, then it's best to shoot into the sun, not with the sun sure. behind you, because as you can see now, there's like shadows on, on this tree, and, it, and it, everyone thinks, oh, that looks nice, but actually when you get back and have a look at it, you realize that you know there's a lot of dynamic range, yeah. it's so difficult, and then the sky behind in the gaps, that that's becomes really distracting. So you want to try and shoot, um, like up a hill, um, you know, where there's a hill behind. Yeah. So you can put a tree with, with sort of a nondescript background. So it sort of stands out a little bit more. So it's just trying to simplify everything as possible, as simple as, as possible. And with so much going on, is there a particular focal length that you tend to favor? Do you shoot it wide yeah, or do that's you go? Good point. Yeah, so, I mean, at the moment, interestingly, I've got a 14 to 30 on, which is a focal length that I very rarely use in, yeah. in woodland. I, I was just shooting some wide angle stuff. And then, so some of these trees, when there's fog, look amazing with the branches out. So this is a bit unusual. Yeah. Usually in the UK, if I'm shooting um, in the Peak District or the Lake District, I'm, I'm usually got my 24 to 120 on. Mm -hmm. and that's like a really good lens because I'm shooting probably between 40 and like 80, 90 millimeters. The one thing you've got to be careful of though, is you don't, you don't have a lot of depth of field, obviously, as no, you go into like no. 60, 70 millimeters. And one of the things you can't do is focus stack because no. obviously trying to focus stack <laughs> something like that would be almost yeah. impossible. Especially if you get a bit of wind. As yeah, well, right? yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And is it something that you would go out and shoot at a particular time of day? Or you mentioned earlier about yeah, direct good, sunlight. Yeah. Is it something that you could benefit from at sunrise or sunset? Or is it just, it's basically what the weather does? Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting actually because I do go out at sunrise, but I do that because it's more likely to be fog in right, the UK. Okay, yeah. So, um, you know, you might get an inversion and that's more likely to happen at sunrise. Um, and I like fog because fog, you know, we've talked about simplification of the scene. That's what we're waiting for here. We're waiting for the fog to drop down and we'll show some you know, photos of that. But as soon as you get fog, then those trees in the background become less uh, dominant in yeah. the scene. So these stand out a little bit more and you create one thing that's very difficult to do in photography, you create that sort of illusion of depth. Yes. Um, so morning's good. I don't think it matters from a point of view of warm light. It's not like, you, you, I don't feel like with woodland photography, you, you're looking to get that golden hour. No, yeah. you're, you're not getting like matters. the pink sunrise in the sky no, or anything like that. I mean, you could be maybe shooting bluebells or, yeah. or, or some ferns that were sure. backlit or something like that. Um, but most of the time you're wanting wet conditions or misty conditions wet sure. being good because they saturate the colors a little bit more yeah. they make, you know if, it, if, if everything's dry it looks a bit dull and boring really sure yeah. well thank you for that That's and okay. it's been really insightful yeah cool. and i'm excited to shoot some stuff in this forest as well oh, so i think so we should epic. go take yeah. some more pictures yeah cool cool
So Nigel, we um, got up incredibly early this morning. <laughs> Too early. And we shot something <laughs> great Astra. I think we've got yeah. some, both got some really good shots there. Yeah, so I think so. Talk me through what you've shot and how you got there and some of the techniques that you've used to get to the final image. Yeah, well, I didn't have this lens on for a start. Right. Um, I had my 14 to 30 and um, we also tried with a 14 to 24 f 2.8. I mean, with Astro, as you know, you, you want to get as much light into the camera as possible. Yeah. Um, and and it was just about you know trying to get different um, exposures for the foreground. We did a bit of light painting, but what was really good was with, with the Z8 was just having that ability to be able to compose the shot. Mm -hmm. I think, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I noticed that I think the the frame rate changes to like one per second or something just to give you enough light for it. Yeah, so especially for you, this is the first time that you've been able to use these kind of low light features that are in this camera yeah. that are designed for things like astrophotography. Yeah. So starlight view and yeah. that red mode. So you Correct. are right yeah. that that starlight view drops the frame rate of the screen, but then it means that you can compose mm. in almost pitch pitch black and yeah. see where the Milky Way yeah, is in the frame. So, so good, yeah. Just makes your life much easier, right? Yeah, way easier and, and I think with, with Astro, one of the hardest things, unless you've scouted an area, is trying to find an exact composition. Um, yeah. Because otherwise, you're taking like you know a four, thirteen, four, you know, fifteen second shot, and then you're waiting, and you compose it a bit differently. So yeah, yeah. it's a, a lot different. And I, I appreciate that we were using torches and stuff, so the red mode wasn't that important this time no. around. But if you're ever out in your own, or if you're shooting in a situation where you want to keep that kind of night vision in your eyes, yeah. that becomes really important, right? Yeah, it, it it does, doesn't it? I mean, you you. Yeah, we, we, we there, was, there was a few of us and we just needed to not trip over each yeah, other, yeah, so we had yeah. torches on, didn't we? But So I didn't use a, that mode that much, but I think it's a, a mode that is just so useful to just have at your fingertips, sure, isn't it, really? Sure. Yeah. Well, I think this place is truly fantastic. It continues to amaze me every I single time. I mean, just, <laughs> that's just me. epic, which is why I've got this lens on. Yeah, but, I'm yeah. glad that we got up this morning to, to make yeah. the journey. I think yeah, we just didn't get the mist, did we? This, no. this mist didn't quite go high enough, but... No. Um, but it was still pretty epic. Right, I think we should shoot that behind us as well. So thanks yep. for that, thanks okay. for that. And I'm sure we can find some more exciting stuff to shoot. Right, Nigel, this is our third shoot location where we yeah. both tried to shoot something a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. I think this has probably been the most difficult. Yeah, definitely. The light hasn't <laughs> been favorable to us. We've had contrast, we've had cloud, we've had fog yeah. in the foreground, we've yeah. had all sorts, right? And yeah, ironically, the clouds like lighting up at the moment, but there's, <laughs> there's nothing, there's no composition, is there? No. But it looks pretty. No. From my side of things, I've tried long exposures and with the contrast, it's just a little tough. And then also long lens stuff as well, but I think you've mainly been focusing on long, longer yeah, lens stuff. Yeah, fast, fast shutter speed, long lens. Um, again, it's tough. I mean, I, there, there's one bit over there, mm. and we'll, sh we'll show the photo now, but it, it's, it was there, was, there was quite a lot of rapid movement in the clouds and it was forming nice shapes. Yes. I think yeah. that might have got a good shot, um, yeah. but I'm not 100% sure. So it was hard because basically the rocks are black. Um, yes. So you've got black and then yeah. you've got white cloud. And here you need to wait for the sun to drop but then it dropped into cloud, yeah. so we didn't get, we just didn't. Yeah. We just, that's what happens in landscape photography, really. It's truly an inspiring location. It's just difficult to shoot, yeah, I think, definitely. unless you're in the right condition. Definitely. So definitely. It's definitely been an experience for me, and uh, hopefully it's been an experience for you as well. Unbe and, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely unbelievable here, isn't it? So I think all I can say really is thank you for the past couple of days. The, that's okay. the images that we've shot, the location yeah, yeah, we've been thanks. to have been fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully thanks you've you enjoyed well. using the Z8. Oh, it's absolutely incredible. What yeah. a camera. Um, I'm excited to actually get my hands on one now yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for good <laughs> yeah i'm excited to look back at some of the images edit some of the stuff as well and yeah i think we've yeah, got yeah. some really good shots in yeah there, i so think so i think so i think it's been a worthwhile trip yeah it definitely has well thanks again yep brilliant